Hello and uh, welcome to episode 32 of Jaga Vision. Um, I'm Jared Nyberg and I'm a co-owner of Jaga Silk. Um, we are going to have a pretty fun show today. Um, we're going to be enjoying some macarons with the owner of uh, Bon Macaron, uh, one of the co-owners I should say, um, Jan. Uh, will be joining us at 120. Um, we also have Sherry Ann, lead singer of Sister Speak, joining us weekly. Um, so it'll be lovely to have her on the show as well. Um, that'll be in exactly five minutes time. So um, before that happens, I always love to try out a tea that I've never had before. So let's see how that goes. Planning on doing a uh, who are so let's see this particular puar that I'm going to be drinking today looks like it's a gong ting shou puar so there's sheng and shou puars um, it's kind of like a a forced fermentation versus a natural fermentation it smells pretty good this is um not packed into cakes. So an interesting way of working with puar when you don't see it in a tea cake form. Let's see, so that's, like to do a good five grams into, you know, if you can get your hands on one, a nice little yixing teapot is always a good call, um, or a gai wan. Something that holds a small amount of tea, I'm sorry, a small amount of liquid. So that's what the leaves look like. Smell very mushroomy and delicious. Gonna put all that tea in there, pair the scale. Then I'm always a big fan of giving my puars or my puars nice rinse so submerge the leaves and then that stimulates them and then I'm going to fill it to 140 Okay, 140 grams, should give us a good sense of this tea in this style called Gong Fu. Oftentimes it's just done by feel um, and you just increase water and tea depending on what the tea um, is asking from you. I like to weigh it out, I'm a big believer in, uh, in using these tools for for tracking purposes so that we can um, sort of get a, a good sense of what a particular tea has to offer. Oftentimes those first infusions of a puar cake are very lightweight indeed, but broken up like this one is, I have some high hopes for something uh, really rich and delicious. The color being on the brackish side. I think this is going to work. See, so you can see the. Get that closer to the camera. Really beautiful, rich color here. So I was smelling mushroom and forest in this organic gong ting. That's a really nice. Nice tea. Hmm. So this is a forced fermentation, right? So so this is uh this is supposed to taste um not that good, but it's delicious. So Normally when you go through these faster fermentations, they, they taste bad. <coughs> huh. But I'm into this. 
I could recommend this for certain. So, Gong Ting. Interesting. <coughs> yeah. Um, today, we're going to have uh, yeah Jan from Bon Macaron. They're just here in Victoria. We're going to be drinking this really nice um, Yabuchita by Fujioka. Um, this particular matcha is a tried and true favorite of Jaga Silk. We've carried selections from um, from Mr. Fujioka for a good um, whew, seven years now. So uh, the relationship is long. Um, uh, we've uh, we get an Okumidori Okuda from him. We get uh, Okumidori Fukada from him, and Okumidori Shimoyama from him. So quite a bit of yeah, quite a bit of ok Okumidori from him from different micro lots. And then we also get this Yabukita. We carry his Samidori. Um, by the way, if you go on our webpage right now, um, his single cultivar Samidori competition grade stuff is available at 50% off. So that's pretty awesome. You should definitely go check it out. Um, it's normally in our yeah competition grade category. Um, it's normally $52, so you can get it for a steal of $26. It's because I bought a little bit too much in 2019. And we keep it in deep freeze, so the quality is solid, but I don't really feel comfortable selling Tencha um, at this time of year for a previous year's harvest, uh, even though it's still really good. It's just kind of something about it. So yeah, go check it out. Uh, hopefully you'll uh, you'll enjoy. I'm just gonna, well, I'll have you on here. I'm just going to put out this invite mm -hmm. to my guests again. Let's see if we can't get them to... Oh, I think we have one of our guests on. Is, th is, is that you, Jan? Oh, I can't quite hear you. Are you muted? Maybe uh, you're muted on my end? Hmm. Interesting, I can't hear you. Let me see. Microphone. Yeah, no. Okay. My speakers are working. Um. Okay, so that was Jan. Uh, Jan, are you... Uh, can you hear me? Do you want to give me a thumbs up if you can hear me? No? Okay, so I can't hear you. Okay, you can't hear me. Okay. Hmm. So I, I can s Yeah, we can see each other. <laughs> um, let's see. He's going to try again. That's interesting. So my... Jan... This is too bad. I can't hear you, man. <laughs> so we do have Jan from Bon Macaron. So just give me a moment here while we figure this out. Okay. Um.
All right, so we have, um, we have Jan joining us from Bon Macaron. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the show today, Jan. Hi, Jared. My pleasure. Um, uh, My pleasure to see you. Um, you want to uh, tell our viewers a little bit about what you do over there at Bon Macaron? Well, we do just macarons. <laughs> the idea is literally everything about macarons. So, so we were with my business partner, uh, David Boiti, who now takes care of our shops uh, in Vancouver. Mm -hmm. We were we wanted to open something together, and we were just tired of. Uh... Hello. I can hear you. Yes, 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 yes. No, it was good. Okay. Yeah. I'm, I'm just listening intently, but I lost your screen there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, there you are. Okay. There we go. Uh, we were just tired of seeing the same flavors all the time in uh, right. every single stores where we're going to. And so we thought that macarons are such a, a diverse dessert, like that you can do any flavors with it. And so we started experimenting, playing around with it. And now it's been uh, seven years that we do just macarons. So we have over... Uh, 40 different flavors and every week we bring a new one we play with them we add we change our flavors uh, awesome and they're really and really good i have to say um thank you yeah big enjoyment of uh of what you do and you know our viewers wouldn't know this but i i know you and 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 david from before you even opened bon macaron so it was uh it's been yeah a, <laughs> it's been a it's been a long time now that we know each other 100 percent, and it's always uh lots of fun working together I always enjoy um, sending you, you know, say our rebos chai or our matcha and then seeing what you come up with, you know, and a lot of times when I work with, um, when I work with uh, artisans, um, there's a lot of back and forth like, oh, you know, the flavor may be a little stronger here or a little weaker there or what have you. But I feel like, I don't know what it is. Maybe we just sh share a similar idea of what we're going for, but you always come back with a product that uh, we're all like my wife and I are, are and our team here are always super happy with. So, well, yeah, <laughs> that's what that's what we go for. Yeah. The, the thing is, because we the way we see it is that we want people to really taste what the flavor, what the label says, you know, like totally. it's yeah. really important that if you have a matcha macaron, for example, that it tastes like matcha, that you don't just get the sugar, the almonds, all the sweetness, because yeah. a lot of places that's what happens uh, they cut on the ingredients they don't put enough of the right products and or they use artificial products and it, it has a huge impact on the product in the end 100 percent. you know when i use um when i'm making my chais for example you know like a chai is not a chai unless it has sugar in it right so i'm not really a big sugar fan myself but if i'm going to make a masala chai i want to do it properly and so i like to look at sugar as a uh, as a spice like it's part of the flavor canvas it's not oh yeah you know when it dominates then things get problematic and so um uh i think when when i don't know about you but if i increase the amount of sugar that i use in my chai creating the product would be a lot cheaper when i look yes. at kind of my excel sheet the more sugar i use the lower the price of the end product would potentially be and so it's actually um yeah, it's actually to make that commitment to, 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 to make the flavors actually make sense actually is costing everybody a little bit of money. But I think it's worth it in the end, you know? Oh, 100 uh, percent. That's exactly with, with us. Our macarons are a bit less sweet than a lot of everybody's macarons because we use half icing sugar, half almond flour when we make the shells. Right. Whereas. A lot Hello? Yeah, I can hear. A lot of places you can make the exact same shell. It would look exact. Yeah, I can't see you, but I can hear you. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> I don't know what's going on with my internet today. Oh well. Um, well yeah. So, uh, could you repeat that last part one more time? But I can hear you. No problem. So, if you the shells, the traditional way to do it is half icing sugar, half almond flour. Right. Now, a lot of stores are going to reduce the amount of almond flour and increase the amount of icing sugar, like you say, to reduce their cost. Right. But in the end, you will notice a huge difference in the product. It's going to be much sweeter, which is going to overpower and we got cut. Yeah, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. You know, I have um, a lot of times. Um, oh, <laughs> I can still hear you. You probably can't hear me or you can't see me anymore, but you can hear me. Can you hear me okay? You can hear me? Hear me. 
Hello? Hello? Yeah, but I can't see you now. Yeah? Hello? <laughs> Hi. For some reason, uh, my music turned on. That's funny. Give me well, a second. Well, that puts a little background. <laughs> oh, that's not you. That's not... Hold on one sec. Hello! <laughs> Oh, hello. There she is, Sherry Ann. Sherry Ann, you joined us. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. I was trying to figure out what's going on with my with my music there. Um, you probably can't see me either, hey? No. But, but our audience can. No, our audience can see you. Oh, this is the weirdest thing. How is this possible? Oh, I see what's going on. Okay, so, give me a second, guys. Just uh, it lost the um. It dumped the call on the uh, the camera that you guys can see, so I'm just gonna. Oh. I'm just grabbing a few bites of uh, coconut lentil curry. I see. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Nice. <laughs> nice yeah. to meet you. <laughs> there nice go. to meet you too. I'm Jan. <laughs> Jan, this is Sherry Ann. Sherry Ann, this is Jan. Hello. <laughs> um, Jan, are you able to put Hi, your, your camera sideways again? Oh, yeah. or Sorry, is, I uh, forgot. No worries. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. No Awesome. There we go. I think we're we're back to uh, okay. All right. I think we have a good a good system set up now. Okay. Awesome. So we're back in back in business. So Sherry Ann uh, uh, is the lead singer of Sister Speak. Um, yeah, and she's also my sister. Um, she's a career musician though. Two, three studio album. No, two studio <laughs> albums and one live album that just came out recently. Uh, when it's not a oh, pandemic, wow. hundreds of shows a year. Um, very widely traveled, um, goes all over the world, has some really amazing music videos online, and she joins us weekly for uh, Jagavision. Um, Sherry Ann, uh, Jan is uh, the co-owner of Bon Macaron that we get our macarons from, um, and we were just talking about um, uh, flavor and how you know not pulling any punches is really important for for bringing out really interesting flavor dynamics, and that the more sugar you use the more uh, your cost would drop, but the, the resulting product is, is nothing that either of us would be proud of serving. So I was talking about how with my chais, if we increase sugar, it would actually be a cheaper product, but we want it to be a flavor balanced product. And so we were talking a little bit about that. So yeah, um, Jan, uh, quick question for you. Um, so we were just talking about my, like, um, yeah, not pulling punches with flavor. Like matcha seems to be the one that a lot of people are afraid of. Um, they they think that if the flavor is too strong, that people won't buy it. Um, you must have experimented with uh, with macarons that were strong and macarons that were a little bit weak in flavor. Um, did did you like how how did you arrive at that flavor strength that you have now? Trial trial and error. When we do a new flavor, it's really we try to. We tried the filling first, so we add a little bit to the point where we're happy with the flavor that we can taste it. And like, what you want is to really, I use buttercream, but it's just to be able to turn the, the matcha into something that I can put between my two shells, you know? Right. But I don't want to be able to taste the buttercream. All I want to taste is the matcha. So that the matcha needs to overpower all the flavors. So it's just getting to that point where you get a, a strong flavor of matcha, mm -hmm. but that it's not too strong that you're like overpowered. It's it's trial and error. It's really uh, playing. We put a little bit of matcha in the shells as well to try to reduce the sweetness. Mm. It brings out the almonds. Uh, it's uh, okay. it's just uh, playing uh, here and there. Uh, and it's using, once again, we use only your matcha. So it's a good product. We know that it's quality product and that makes a huge difference. Uh, You'll go in some places. They'll have a matcha macaron, and it's like barely colored. And you did you the, you did experiment with a different matcha at one point, right? And then you decided that uh, that Jaga Silk matcha was the one you were going to go with, even though we are quite a bit more expensive. We we never. I to be honest with you, I never tried other matchas. Oh really? Okay. I, but I know I know because I know you're a good quality. <laughs> like I know you from before the the store. I didn't yeah. I didn't try to go for. I don't need to go to i don't want to go to the for the cheapest one okay i want to i'd rather go with someone that know their product you know now anytime i have someone coming to the to that buys the matcha i can tell them where it comes from who makes it if they want to go and see the actual product it's a block away from our store nice. i'd rather have this that than some uh, random company that is halfway across the world that i can't 
talk about. So fair enough. I, I, I sorry. Uh, I just, I, I'd heard through the grapevine that in Vancouver there had been some experiments, and that you guys had decided. Which, oh yeah, we did try. We did try over there. It's true with the with the Grenville Island uh, Tea Company. Mm-hmm. I wasn't so going to name drop, a, but <laughs> it's it's because they're right. We use them for other teas. Right, 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 right. And I and I and I love their product. I use uh, I use different companies for the teas, but for the matcha, it's just. I find matcha such a specific product, mm. and it's also that I have your product in Victoria, and it's important for me to be consistent all over the all over the all over the shops. Mm-hmm. So we decided to go with your product for this. But uh, from that company, we use their jasmine green tea. We use other products. Uh, okay. Cool. So we 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 try to figure out, you know, like they they have. Uh, like I really like their jasmine green tea. It has a really nice fragrant flavor. Uh, They're lovely so folks I, over we there. We decided to to use this one. Uh, th- we we pair up with uh, a lot of companies. We get our lavender from Happy Valley Farm in Mitchison. Uh, nice. We it, that's what we like to find people that are passionate about specific products that we all know very well about it and uh, and get the best out of it. Likewise, you know, like I'm, I'm so in uh, uh, parallel thinking for certain. I, I love to have um, a uh, a connection to obviously who I'm buying from, and that's not just for the um, not just for the the teas, but uh, for other ingredients. Like we have a, a dessert program here, as I'm, I know you're aware of. Uh, we make some, I think, some really lovely daifuku, and um, yes. and we have uh, uh, made uh, ice cream here in the past. Uh, we make uh, cheesecakes and different tarts and stuff and and i'm always like very interested in you know if we're going to make a cheesecake i love to use um the you know that cream top yogurt makers o- over in 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 up island here on vancouver island i i love to if i'm going to work with even a sugar i really like to know who made the sugar um if we're going to make with um if we're going to use a uh a cinnamon i want to know the cinnamon farmer you know i i really I really want to know who created the product. I think, uh, you know, there's a cereal out there actually um, that I eat that th- they, they, they put the, the farmer's picture on the on the cereal. I, I, I find that so awesome, nice. you know, <laughs> <It's> yeah, <laughs> like for even just the grains, right? Like it's, it's really nice when we can have that that connection to the, the, the different um, folks that we buy from for certain. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, and and uh, Mark and I, for, I, for the life of me, I can't remember Mark's wife's name over at Granville Island Tea Company, but they're they're lovely folks. And they actually, I don't know if you knew this, but they introduced us to uh, one of our Indian tea connections, um, oh, uh, yeah. the the owners of the Doka Estate, and uh, they're actually going to be on. We have this tea festival coming up. Um, I've been telling everybody about it, but I'm going to tell the viewers today too. Uh, on November 23rd till 24th, we're going to actually be doing 24 hours straight. Um, and I'm going to be hosting it with uh, with the other um, director of the International Tea Appreciation Society. Both of us will be on for 24 hours straight interviewing uh, okay. tea industry folks and farmers and stuff on the 23rd to the 24th. Details at uh, victeafestrevival.org. Victeafestrevival.org. And um, yeah, it's, it's going to be pretty fun times. But uh, maybe we'll be able to drink. Uh, maybe we can have you on uh, and, and talk tea macarons on the s- at some point on the 23rd to the 24th if we can find a time that works. Yeah, for you. we'll have to we'll have to figure out the time. You know, and on that note, hold on one sec. Um, I have a couple macarons that I picked up from you today. Um, one of them uh, happens to be this beautiful yuzu macaron, and then uh, we get this yuzu uh, from a farm in in uh, Gifu, and my wife's from Gifu, and Kaminoho is the name of the, the region, and um, we get this uh, peel, and then you, you've you made this macaron with this yuzu peel, and again, like, whew, <laughs> epic macaron. <laughs> I, I, you know, it's interesting because um, in tea ceremony, uh, they often have um, a sweet before they have their matcha, and it's often a little tiny sweet, and macarons fulfill such an interesting role in matcha sort of enjoyment and that you can sort of um, r- replace the wagashi or the, the 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 Japanese sweet with one of your macarons and I think it works so beautifully um, and uh, it kind of makes me feel like I'm I'm having uh, a lovely uh, tea ceremony experience and I figured w- perhaps while we're talking and Sherry Ann please jump in and ask questions whenever you want I, I, I always want you to feel like uh, 
you're part of the conversation and and and, and I'm not leaving you out so <laughs> I just you... I'm really excited to try these macarons okay awesome cool all right so <laughs> and um, the tea. <laughs> So one of them is a, you want to talk to us a little bit about maybe process here, um, Jan, but maybe actually, you know what, before we get into that, let's, uh, why don't we make a uh, matcha, then we'll talk about your process for making macarons a little bit, sure. and then uh, yeah. kind of take it from there. Um, you have a, I, did I, I lent you a bunch of equipment, I can't remember if I lent you a bowl, did I forget to lend uh, you a bowl? No, well, yeah, I made it uh, in my cup. <laughs> uh, I used the bowl. Uh, I used another bowl, and uh, and I made it in my cup. Uh, but uh, but you gave me the the whisk. Nice and, uh, and, and the, the kettle. kettle. So I heated up, uh, and I used the uh, and the matcha. So I I have it ready. You have it there. Well, the... well, why don't we do yes. it live? It's fun to do it live. It's good times. Are you able to? Uh, with the camera, it's gonna be difficult, but. Uh, but I, I don't really have a, a bowl. A bowl? Okay. Hey, um, it's one second. Be a bit hey, Micah. Delicate. Can you run over a bowl to Bon Macaron for me, please? <laughs> there we go. I can put the. I'll be right back. I'm just gonna put the the water. Uh, the one set the water to heat up. Can you bring this bowl over to him? Sure. Awesome. Thank you very much. What temperature is the water going to be today? Um, 60 degrees is ideal. Do you want to set your temperature variable kettle at 60 degrees there, Jan? Okay, yeah. I'll be right back. I'll do that. Okay, awesome. So, yeah, fun, fun. <laughs> I like, want to know how these macarons are made. Like, how did they get to be that kind of texture? And, it's, like, uh, it looks so perfect. Like, what is the... I'm so curious. Yeah, Sorry. it's pretty, <laughs> pretty wild. So, he does, like, so egg whites, almonds sugar um yeah we're gonna we're gonna hear a little bit about this it's gonna be good time right. okay so i'm so uh, the, um, yeah you want to talk to us a little bit about matcha, do you use do you use a, a a cane sugar for the the sugar there or do you use a uh, refined sugar no i just i use refined sugar you use refined sugar um and then you use an almond powder from uh yeah it's an almond flour so it, it comes from uh we get ours from california because uh it's most of the almonds in the world come from there and we i use so much that i need a, a big producer yeah fair enough and then uh, but, how, how do you decide which which almond powder is the one for you is it just about size of company and cost or is there is there some sort of threshold for what makes a good almond flour versus a bad almond flour no because the thing is uh, almond flour being a na natural product it's always going to be different like we once we receive it mm -hmm. we still um, we still uh, re regrind it a second time because depending on how they grind it sometimes it's going to be really fine great to use mm -hmm. and the following time it's going to be still quite coarse and right. so it's not going to work uh, not going to work as well and so just to make sure that we always have the finest powder possible we we add uh, we put it in the food processor for about a minute okay and so we're gonna start by mixing the icing sugar and the almond flour mm -hmm. we're gonna add some uh, egg whites to that to get uh, to, so that it forms a, a paste right like um, yeah almond paste pretty much and then we're gonna um, we're gonna mix that with uh, on a with a uh, in your case with some yuzu powder. We add a little bit of the yuzu powder in the in the batter, mm -hmm. and so that's gonna be the on one part. On the other part, we're gonna make a meringue. So we use uh, an Italian meringue in the in the store. So that's gonna be. Uh, um, sorry, I'm struggling with the. With the kettle? With the kettle at the same time. <laughs> bottom left is the power <laughs> on button. And then bottom right is the hot hold button. So if you turn on the power on the bottom left, then the up and down buttons will let you choose the temperature. Because right now I have a timer on it. Well, I have... Yeah, there's a timer going on. On the kettle? You mean the temperature's yeah. going up? No, it's a, it's a timer. It says 10 seconds, 11. Are you sure you're not talking about the scale? It doesn't make sense. The I have your uh, your employee. Ah, uh, there we go. Ninety. Okay, perfect. Okay, awesome. 
no, I think I got it. You got it? Okay. Okay. Lovely being this close. We can just send over one of our crew to to just uh, help you out over there. <laughs> for those who don't know, okay, Bon Macaron is literally two blocks away. So really easy to, to send over uh, one of our crew to hand Jan a, a bull and then and, and take him through the, the usage of that overly complicated uh, temperature variable kettle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> is, it, is it a different one than the black one, or is it the same? It's a different one. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a Bonavita. It's um, stainless uh, steel. A little bit more complicated. I should have lent him my really, the really easy one here. I have a fellow yeah. um, that's it's just... It's very complete. It's very easy. It's me that is not, uh, <laughs> not good with it. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. I love how when we don't have you on video there, Jan, it's just a talking macaron logo. It's great. <laughs> yeah, <I love> <laughs> we we still have to give a name to that guy. Uh, we haven't named him over the years, and it's been a joke. Uh, we have to name our little guy uh, in our little group. But yeah, yeah. We have we have the Christmas where like he in December we have we have him with a little Santa hat. Uh, we got different versions of it. Uh, okay, him. okay, I I like it. Maybe you could uh, make Bon into uh, some initials or something. Yeah, now we have to we have to figure this out. You need to so give, you, give him a very French the, name. Uh, you put the water first and then the matcha. No, other way around. In? So what we're gonna do okay. is, uh, do you do you have a sieve anywhere uh, around there? I imagine that you'd have a sieve. I didn't yes. feel like I needed to yes. lend you a sieve. Okay, cool. So you're gonna you're gonna put your bowl onto the scale, okay? Okay. And then you're gonna put a sieve on the bowl, and you're gonna tear it, okay? And I don't know if we can get your video going or not, but uh, that would be awesome. Let me... It's not the end of the world if we can't, but it would just be lovely to see what you're doing over there. Uh, how do I get my uh, camera back on? Oh. There, there you go. go. Amazing. Okay, great. Woo. And then and then uh, what you want to do there, Jan, is you want to you wanna put two grams of matcha. You can, you can kind of... Shake it onto the sieve. Two grams. My camera is really close. Uh, two grams of matcha. Oh wow! Then it measures it when the sieve's not touching the ground. Yeah, and then you want to push. Then once you know that you have two point zero grams, and you can be within point one gram of error, this is when you're gonna you're gonna push the matcha through the sieve, and this breaks it up, gives you a much nicer texture than if you didn't do this. Okay. I lost point one of a gram in transfer. <laughs> We're gonna be okay. We're gonna be okay. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, because we pre-dosed that one for you, I think. Yeah. <laughs> and then, uh, then what you're gonna do is you're going to um, let me know if you if you're at this part in the process yet there. So I'm getting it through the through the sieve. You know, it helps uh, to push the matcha through the sieve with a spoon. Is it? And I'm using the lid, a lid to push it. <laughs> <laughs> we should let. But you. I think it works. It works. Okay, awesome. <laughs> and then uh, once you push the matcha through the sieve, that process normally, if you use a spoon, takes about three seconds. But I find when I yeah. put it through like flour, it takes like quite a long time. Um, okay. Then at sixty degrees, you're gonna pour water onto your tea, but make sure you've teared your 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 bowl with the tea in it. You tear it on the scale, and you're going to yeah. put in 90 grams of water. 90 grams. 90 milliliters? 90 mils, yeah. 90 grams. 90 it's grams. 90. Okay. It's equivalent to three ounces. You want to be within uh, five grams of error. So you there can be go. as little as 85 and as much as 95. So at this point, you take the, the bowl off of the scale. Oh, if you don't like to, to whisk on the scale. And we're going to hold the whisk between. I did the ridge 100 by accident. It's not the end of the world. Between the ridge and the black band, I like to give myself. I like to stand up. It just makes a big difference because then I'm over top of the bull. And then don't go side to side like that. You want to make sure that you have a long arm, and that you're anchoring the bull with your other hand. And then you gently whisk, draw M's to gather in the powder. And then in the center, you want to whisk quite vigorously. This is, this is you're trying to spill it. The bowl is, is shaped so that you can't spill, but you whisk quite vigorously, and that's going to aerate and add lots of texture. 
and then you start to draw oh, m's wow. then you then you start to draw m's again for about seven seconds and this is going to integrate all that froth that you built up and you're going to get a nice creamy texture it's so chilly outside here that my hands started cramping up <laughs> oh no oh no we should almost have you come in <laughs> it's all good it actually it looks incredible this one frothed up like amazing i haven't nice. ever nice very nice i've been I've been drinking matcha in a hurry the last few days, not measuring it, and I haven't been getting the same froth. Well, there you go. That's the way to so do it. That's why I, where's my camera? Oh, there we go. Okay. Oh, look at that. Nice, Jan. <laughs> Very cool. Okay. Beautiful. You want to show the camera one more time there, Jan? Okay, awesome. Okay, yeah, yeah. That's, you know, you're, when you, if you practice that technique, you're going to get to the point where you're like at one centimeter of froth. It's going to be amazing. But even just like some froth on there is going to make a, a big difference for giving it more of a milky texture. It's quite enjoyable yep. that way. And uh, when, sure. when, uh, oh, ah, and looks like my video lost you guys. Hold on one sec, okay? Oh, I'm having quite a hard. I still have you. Yeah, my. Oh, um, have... I'm using kind of a a software that. Uh, it's called um, uh, uh, Streamlabs, and it's what I use for um, the the uh, for communicating this channel to um, basically the rest of the the world here. So what you guys see and what the audience sees is two different things, I guess is what I'm trying to say. Okay, awesome. I fixed it. So. All right, um, so when you drink it, um, it's really nice to drink it in three savored gulps. So if you want to bring it right up to your mouth and, and at least drink one third of it in one fell swoop. I'll be right there and running low on batteries. Uh oh, okay. <laughs> I love all these technical <laughs> issues today. I feel like every, every show is a new adventure. I, I, I often do um, my shows, I'll, ha I'll put things on mute when I'm trying to figure stuff out. And then when I come back after I fixed it, I forget to turn off the mute button and then I'll have like these five to 10 minute gaps in my show where I can hear what you guys are saying, but the audience can't hear me or you. <laughs> it's <laughs> way too much fun. <laughs> okay. So. Yeah. Okay, so we're, we're powered and we're drinking. So, so in tea ceremony, you would drink, you would eat the sweet first and then you would have the matcha, but I really love to have the matcha first so I can taste what it tastes like before I eat the sweet. But it's really interesting to have a tea like this. This is like a really good balance of bitters, sweet, and acid. This is kind of like the quintessential matcha that's meant for like tea ceremony usucha. And then what I'd love you guys to do is 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 um is grab a bite of the the macaron, especially the usual one. So good. Wow, what's the one that has the little cinnamon on top of it? That's the London Fog. That's the, the rooibos chai. Oh, yeah, sorry. Rooibos chai. Thank you. <laughs> mm. Oh, wow. And then what's the other one? Yuzu. It's a Japanese citrus fruit. Mm. Oh, my gosh. Mm, and the aroma you, yeah. is incredible, too. For certain. And then you, when you, then you get this, wow. this sweetness in your mouth. And I find that whenever I have anything sweet, I love to have tea. I can't not have a tea or a coffee after I have something sweet. Because <laughs> yeah. I get this lingering feeling in my mouth of sweetness. But when I have the bitters of a tea, it just makes it like the balance is just so epic. Yeah. And it's together. That's a pretty common thing now that I think about it, tea and dessert. Yeah, because like when you have the dessert on its own, you get this sweet kind of aftertaste, right? And it, it just stays there. And yeah, it's, it's nice to, 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 to switch it up and or to, to kind of bring balance to it. Um, so, I also uh, love what the you, warmth of tea with anything. For certain. Oh, no, 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 that's great. It, it, especially when you're outside in the cold. <laughs> but, yeah, are you tasting chocolate? I'm tasting chocolate in this a little bit. Yeah, like especially, chocolate. especially after the macaron. I, I think it's so interesting, the flavors that come out after we have the macaron versus before. Like before I was tasting mostly vegetal. Uh, I was tasting s some more bitters. Whereas when I have the, the macaron mm. and then I come back and then the, the matcha just tastes so smooth and chocolatey oh, yeah. and creamy and like like perfect it's like it was meant to be paired with this macaron you know <laughs> are, you, are, you, are you tasting that Jan what are we picking up in this matcha 
Oh, I really get, for me, it's really like the vegetal, uh, especially like I find that the sweetness cuts a little bit, the bitter, like a lot of the bitterness of the matcha that you first get. Mm. And I find the second one, uh, you get, I don't know, I, for me, the macaron eliminates that kind of bitterness that is at the surface of the, of the flavor. And you get way deeper on the, in terms of flavor, you get way more like the back flavors the mm -hmm. second time around uh, it yeah it's really interesting uh it really brings them I, forward, I really eh? like that vegetable uh, like flo like yeah earthy flavors yeah, we often say this tea tastes <clears throat> like snap peas or chrysanthemum but a lot of the times that's because we're drinking it on its own we're not having it with other things and so yeah um the it's much lighter when you drink it after like it's a and i know no it's really flavor I'm going to show this to the, the camera here, the macaron. Um, can you, so whenever I have macarons, even at like really good, like craft bakeries that are really amazing at what they do, um, a lot of the times the shape of the macaron is really off. Like it's not uh, like a good, and I know that's not going to really affect the flavor so much, but texture and aesthetics, I do think play a role. Do you want to talk a little bit about how you achieve this uniform result? Like what, what? How, is it just it's, uh, it's all in the mix it's when because you may basically prepare the almond batter yeah and then you fold it you fold the meringue into it so like i was saying we do we make an italian meringue so we heat up uh, water and sugar to 118 degrees we pour it into egg whites that we got that we whipped up uh -huh. and this is going to give us our meringue once it cools down and then you fold this into the batter mm. and no matter where you go in the world even the biggest company folding the meringue into the batter has to be done by hand and Interesting. that will um. make or break your macaron because if you on the f on the fold it then there's going to be too much air your macaron is going to be not going to look good it's going to the batter is going to be too thick mm -hmm. if you over mix it on the other side the it, you lose the crunchiness it's like you lose the the nice texture of the egg whites they become too soft and in the end you end up with pancakes that like you completely lose the texture and the and the shape of the original shape of the macaron and then the the feet don't look the same like there's a lot of little things that starts going wrong uh, so it's really that folding of the of the bed of the meringue into the batter that will determine the the look of your macarons so how did you, how do you, uh, so you made some trips to, or at least I know David has, I'm sure you have as well, back to France to kind of study um, techniques in, 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 at patisseries in France. But even when, I don't know, when I was in Paris and stuff, I was looking at macarons. And honestly, Jan, like I wasn't seeing very many that compared to what you guys are doing. And I don't mean that as a sort of like, oh, you're amazing, you're the best. I'm just, you know, I do really believe that I, you're, what you do is, is phenomenal. But I think that that I, uh, people might be surprised at the lack of uniformity, even in the birthplace of of, of macarons. That there's uh, oh, yeah. there's issues with with uh, like it's just because you're in France doesn't mean that it's going to taste good, right? Like what you're doing oh, no. uh, is 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 next not. level, right? Like you're really elevating this to a craft. It's it's really fascinating to see, right? And you must have gone through trials and tribulations, right? Where like maybe. Oh, when you, when you pass it on to another, absolutely don't turn well. Yeah, <laughs> we have some macarons that absolutely like before because we do a new flavor every week. We have some flavors that don't turn out as good as others that we don't ever put out. Uh, we have ideas that don't work out. Uh, there, there's a whole lot of trial and error, but I think the the thing is, we we only do macarons so they have to be good like mm -hmm. I, I can't rely on uh, anything else you know you have big companies uh, in mm -hmm. france if you take la durée the most famous for their macarons mm -hmm. they have the packaging they have the name they have the history they have uh, everything they've been he they've been around for 150 years they have the most famous designers doing the the packaging they always they don't need to focus as much on their product Interesting. You know, that happens a lot. In the, that happens so. a lot in tea as well, where you have this amazing story, you have amazing packaging, but the 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 product itself is 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 substandard due to just you know I guess it's part of the trials and tribulations of getting too big, you know. And you guys though you've managed to stay with a pretty awesome quality product even though you're what what are you at now three stores four stores, 
So we changed it a bit. We just uh, closed you... one store, and right, but we opened a, a way bigger kitchen, right? And uh, with a with a classroom area. So now we're we're gonna be more, spending more time uh, teaching people how to make macarons. We have uh, Christmas workshops coming up where we teach people how to make shapes. Actually, like to make a snowman, to make candy cane, to make. Uh, little polar bears uh, nice. so we're expand expanding the the type of workshops that we're doing and uh, and we we're bringing also new material so we got a freeze dryer so we're going to be able to use even more local products because we basically freeze dry them so we turn any any product like uh, i have to go and get some plums and uh, we're going to turn that into powder so i've been going with the season like when blueberries were in season this summer we got tons of them we freeze dried everything we used it in powder and so we're gonna be, we use some of those products to nice. make our macarons that's fun so and, and you're, you're we new, found new ways uh, your new space is in granville island right like that kitchen and stuff am yeah. i right is that the one that you're telling me about with the, the exciting project uh we were talking about a while back that's that's cool yeah so it finally it finally happened we had our first Cheers. class uh, for our halloween workshop Mm. So end, uh, end of October, uh, so we're on uh, Cartwright Street, so on the other side of the island, right next to the hotel. Very cool. Right next to Granville Island Hotel, we have a beautiful view, we have our class that has uh, three windows on Falls Creek, uh, unbeatable so cool. view. So, you know, I haven't yeah, been to no, Vancouver, nice I used to go every month, I haven't been since March. Um, and now things are it's unfortunately going in a negative trajectory in terms of the pandemic, so... I don't see yeah, myself no, going I used to, to same thing. I used to go every week and uh, I, I went there a, little, uh, a few times. Uh, I think this year I might have gone five times where I used to go uh, every, week? every every week or every other wow. week. Uh, so I'm, I'm yeah, just happy no. for you that there's two of you. Hey, that uh, you have uh, uh, an owner mm -hmm. over on the mainland and you have uh, you over here uh, managing things in Vin Victoria. Um, oh, it wouldn't be possible without him because um, yeah. So kudos he to, accepted to, to move. Uh, well, he accepted to move to Vancouver, and that's one big thing uh, that uh, I have to give him credit for, <laughs> on top of everything that he does in the shops. But you know, in retrospect, we could have had David on as well because this is a Google call, right? So it would have been easy to have both Victoria and Vancouver uh, happening. We might not have been able to run him a bowl as easily, but you know. Yes. And. Uh, <laughs> Uh, and he's uh, he's running. I think today it's because uh, we have a few wholesale clients in right. uh, in Vancouver, and so today he's doing all the deliveries. Uh, Keeping busy. So he's a bit all over the all over the place in Vancouver. So and I, I appreciate you making this uh, this window. I know you're also a busy man. Um, that bowl you're drinking out of, though, by the way, there, Jan. That's uh, that was actually made in France, if you can believe it. It's a fellow trained uh, oh, yeah? with a Japanese oh, yeah, potter. Nice. Uh, if you want to show it to the camera for the viewers, it's kind of a, I love that bowl. Really rustic, really beautiful, very well put together matcha bowl. And uh, that wasn't even on purpose, yeah. but <laughs> there you go. It Jap worked out well. <laughs> it worked out. It worked out. The guy trained under, um, or trained with the Japanese potter and learned some pretty uh, nice. amazing skills. And we, we met him in, um, in Narbonne, in the, uh, near the, oh, yeah. yeah, near the, just before the Pyrenees when you're going to southern France. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So and, uh, it's a beautiful region over there. I love it. It's probably yeah. I'm. It was my first time going um, on international travel outside of Japan, uh, United States, and Canada. Was to Narbonne, <laughs> if you can believe it. There was a an amazing. Well, uh, it's, uh, it's a nice place to go. It's uh, you have uh, lots of uh, you good food. Uh, yeah. No, there's a lot of things to do over there. We went to see Jordi Saval, an amazing early music uh, artist. He has a, um, a uh, music series he does every year where uh, he plays in ancient music on ancient instruments. He's a United Nations artist for peace. And uh, my wife and I had been uh, married 10 years and, uh, or been together 10 years and we wanted to celebrate that. So yeah, it was pretty, it's pretty enough. cool to go and make that happen. But yeah, I love it so much. I had some really good food, but I know we, had, we don't have much more of your time left. I know you were going to give me 40 minutes today and I think we've kind of crossed that threshold. Um, but uh, <laughs> maybe you wanted to, um, if you I have, uh, Cheyenne, you sound like you have a question. Yeah, I have a quick question. Like, um, so the top and bottom part of the mac macaron, do, do you bake it? Like, is that, 
great. And yes, so, so that's uh, that's what that's the product. So once we have the the batter and the meringue folded together, we put everything mm. in piping bags, and then we make all the shells. So everything is handmade, uh, one okay. by one. We bake them for about uh, about ten minutes, just over ten minutes at uh, three hundred degrees Fahrenheit. And then you let the shells cool down, and once they cool down, we fill them. And uh, so the chai and the ma and the yuzu are made with a, a buttercream base. So it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be egg white, sugar, and butter, basically. Mm. And then we add the yuzu powder to it. We add the matcha, the matcha, the chai. Uh, we do a lot of with uh, a, a buttercream as a base because it doesn't have too much flavor on its own. It's just, oh. cre it's just a creamy, a creamy texture, but pretty much flavorless, and which is nice because this way we can give it any flavor we want. Nice. And so nice. we, that's how uh, we add the yuzu powder to it. And depending on how strong the product is, uh, we add a bit more, a bit less. Uh, and it's really in tasting because, for example, the yuzu powder, I really like it because it brings out the, the bitterness of the yuzu, but if you put too much powder in it, then it completely overpowers the sweetness. Right. And then it, I find that it becomes too bitter for a dessert. Mm. Yeah, makes but, sense. Makes sense. Do you find the same so thing happens with the matcha you, too? You play, uh, matcha, not as much, because the matcha, I don't know, the, the sweetness, it, it goes more together i don't know it i find that it gives a different flavor with the sweetness and it goes well but it's more with it's really we because we use a yuzu i, I made some yuzu before but with a yuzu puree mm -hmm. so the the inside versus the outside and you don't it's hard to get as much bitterness in it right. versus yours i have to be careful not to get <laughs> too much in it so because well, you're using the peel right different yeah. uh, oh yeah no but that's great because that's what we want in the user. We want to bring that sourness, but also yeah. that bitterness, because that's the characteristic of a yuzu. That's what makes it different than uh, just a plain lemon. Yeah, definitely. It has a very exotic citrusy quality, if you ask me. I, I'm just, I'm enamored by yuzu. I think it's really a good time for certain. Oh, for us, it replaced. We don't have a, a plain lemon one, and anybody that asks me for lemon, I direct them towards a yuzu one because I find that. You still get that citrusy flavor, but it's a way more interesting flavor. Mm -hmm. Like there's way more depth to it than just plain lemon. Yeah, I'm, so. I'm such a sucker for yuzu. Like yuzu, we do a, a matcha yuzu drink here too. And what's nice about the peel is because it's not like this, 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 uh, I can actually put it with sugar and um, steam it into milk and pour it over a matcha shot and it doesn't curdle the milk. Whereas if I worked with say lemon juice or with yuzu juice, that amount of acid would definitely curdle yeah, the milk. Yeah, well, the acid, uh, yeah. So it, it's nice. um, it gives me a little bit more freedom. It's for the Empress. Speak again? Uh, I don't know if I got you to, I don't know if I got you to try some. I'll have to, to drop you off some because, I mean, uh, it's for you. The For the Empress, uh, Haiti, we've made uh, some matcha yuzu macarons. So we right. use your matcha. It's a matcha buttercream. That's with exciting. With yuzu turd in the center. And that's why so you started going through a little bit more matcha. Pure. Yeah, you know, for our viewers yes. watching, um, when you go to the Fairmont Empress and you have uh, afternoon tea there, um, you do get macarons, right? That's that's in the afternoon. Yeah, you, I think I think it's one one macaron per person on the on the little tray of uh, that they bring you, and, and so it's. Uh, and you guys are making that ma those macarons, and you're using our matcha yeah. in them. Exactly until uh, December fifth. Until that's December fifth. Switching. Oh no. They're switching <laughs> it for. Oh, it will come back because he really likes uh, those kind of flavors. But he yeah. just he switches them uh, regularly, and then there's one uh, there's a Christmas flavor that is gonna come out for one month, and then they're shutting down for renovations ah. for, for a few months. Makes sense. Good so, time to do I'm it, sure, hey? Uh, as, uh, yes. It's not a busy yeah, time not. for hotels right now. That's uh, that is no. for certain, and uh, it's probably not even. It's gonna it's gonna get worse before it gets better. So. Yeah. Oh yeah. Good time to sure. do renovations. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay. Awesome. Well, um, thank you so much, Jan, for coming on the show. Um, if you wanted to say anything in parting about the tea, about the the macaron, or uh, to Sherianne, a sister speak, or or whatever you want to say in, in, as we end here. No. Uh, if you're curious about macarons, uh, come and check us out. We we it goes from uh, matcha to uh, 
chocolate to bacon to uh, white truffle uh, like mushroom truffle and pink Himalayan salt so we do like we'll do more the craziest macarons that you've ever seen and go goes really and good with uh, the matcha <laughs> yes maybe not the bacon but you never know you never know you I, never know <laughs> I'm not much of a meat eater myself, but <laughs> I imagine for bacon lovers. There we go. Or even, uh, <laughs> no, we have one like with blue cheese. We have one with goat cheese. We <laughs> play. Those ones are more for, for appetizer to have with a glass of wine. Uh, we have the sweet ones for tea and the savory ones for wine. So Amazing. But Yeah, no. So if, you, if you're curious about this uh, or if you want to learn how to make them, uh, come and see us. Uh, we're a block away from you on Broad Street. Yeah. And also in, on Granville Island if you're in Vancouver. So bon bonmacaronpatisserie.com yeah. is where they can find you, right? And then yeah, uh, bonmacaron.com. And uh, bon oh really nice. And then bonmacaron um, at bonmacaron patisserie for your Instagram, or is that also at bonmacaron? No, it's bonmacaron patisserie. Yeah, at bonmacaron patisserie. <laughs> but we haven't changed it yet. Love your accent. <laughs> it's so awesome. You say it like how it's supposed to be said. Bonmacaron patisserie. Is that correct? That's perfect. Oh. Awesome. Good job. All right. <laughs> Thank you, Jan. Really appreciate you coming on. You're and very then, welcome. And then, uh, nice to have you. <laughs> Sister Speak, uh, if people want to go check out uh, Sister Speak. Actually, Sharon, if you wanted uh, some, some final words before we go here. Oh, thank you, Jan. I'm really looking forward to checking out your shop for Christmas presents. <laughs> yeah, we have uh, nine Christmas flavors coming out uh, last, week, last Friday of uh, November. Awesome. So all the, we'll have about 10 different things uh, for Christmas. We'll have little reindeers, little snowmen. Uh, we have all the traditional Christmas flavors uh -huh. uh, like gingerbread, candy cane, uh, rum and eggnog, uh, mint chocolate. Uh, yes, no, we go, we go crazy for Christmas. Cool. Awesome. Okay. Well, if you want to check out uh, Sherry Ann's stuff, um, and I encourage you to do so, Jan, um, uh, at Sister <laughs> cool. Speak Music. Is her Instagram, sisterspeakmusic.com. Yeah, um, she's also uh, at our live shows. If you ever, I know you're a busy, busy man, but uh, if you ever can make it over uh, Fridays, we do these uh, Outdoor Music Fridays. They end in November, um, but uh, she performs every Friday. Mm -hmm. And then we have everything carefully nice. marked off, service and masks and a visor. The tables are all two meters apart. The singers are behind a plexiglass screen. Um, and uh, she has her albums available there, of course. Uh, the new one being the live album. Um, so people should go definitely follow mm. Sister Speaks uh, work and, and check out what Sherry Ann's up to. Amazing reggae, world music, uh, uh, indie folk, uh, blues, uh, the, the list goes on, the different genres that she dabbles in. It's quite a fascinating um, uh, musical project. And then my music project actually we, uh, is called Truth and Dolphin. And we, we actually play the last Friday of this uh, of this month, and uh, Sharon will actually be one of the uh, one of the, the the folks accompanying me. So gratitude for that. So if you can make it to a show, you should check it out. But tomorrow is going to be Peter Dent, a jazz pianist. It's going to be lots of fun. But anyway, uh, Jan, mm -hmm. thank you so much for coming on. I uh, really appreciate your time today. Thank and, you. And hello to David and well, your crew, you. and and uh, always gratitude for your amazing craftsmanship. Well, thank you for your craftsmanship too. <laughs> Thank you, sir. And, and Sherry Ann, uh, always every week, uh, gratitude for you coming on. Love what you do, your music, your insights. Um, really appreciate uh, the time that we have with you every week for certain. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate you guys. All right, we'll see you guys later. You take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Okay, so that was uh, Sherry Ann of um, Sister Speak. We also had Jan on from Bon Macaron. Um, really uh, awesome conversation talking about different uh, the kind of trials and tribulations, the, the research and development involved in making that perfect macaron. Um, pairs beautifully with a traditional matcha. So if you want to grab yourself a macaron from Bon Macaron and then you can try this Yabukita by Fujioka that we had. Um, it's a, I didn't talk too much about this tea, but uh, the Yabukita by Fujioka is kind of our standard. Um, this is, uh, in our reserve selections, it's not a cheap matcha, but it's kind of, you could say middle of the road for Jaga Silk, um, but uh, really high level. I've actually never had a better pure Yabukita than the one that we're getting from uh, Mr. Fujioka. This is seven year plus relationship that we've had with him. Um, and uh, this cultivar on its own unusual 
to find, getting a little bit more common where you can find these single cultivar Yabich doves. But as a matcha, um, I've yet to find it, other than what he's doing. Um, it's from Wadzuka, which is in Kyoto. Uh, really perfect balance of bitter, sweet, and acid. He grows this and an okumidori. The okumidori is kind of an interesting choice to grow with Yabuchita because Yabuchita you can harvest a little bit earlier and then okumidori is a slower growth so you can use the same harvesting team to harvest both uh, because it, it, of that succession. Um, and uh, this particular cultivar gives you a lot of, uh, a little bit more um, volume of in your harvest um, and the flavor dynamics are just spot on. So he's doing a great job this is my second bowl um great with that macaron um and then hopefully uh, if you want to come down if you're in victoria watching this and you want to come to music fridays come join us you can see sister speak you could even uh enjoy a macaron that we get made for us by uh by uh, jan and david over at uh bon macaron um we're gonna have our yuzu macaron and our rebus chai macaron used uh are made using our product so exciting times Anyhow, we'll see you again next week. Uh, it'll be Thursday at 1 p.m. Uh, check out jagasilk.com. On the top page, we'll have announcements on who's going to be on, what teas you can grab, and uh, looking forward to seeing you next week. You take care and have a fantastic day.